StubHub Center in Carson, California. It's a 2013 CIF State Football Championship Bowl Games presented by Farmers Insurance. Tonight, a Division I State Championship at stake as the Golden Eagles of Del Oro High and Loomis travel south to take on the Bakersfield Drillers representing the Central Section. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, my partner, Mike Pulaski. Once again, Kelly Tennant will join us a little bit later. We've already had one game in the books. It was the D4 Championships. Central Catholic of Modesto doing what they did last year. Had a little bit tougher time, though, with Bakersfield Christian tonight. Yeah, Central Catholic ran the football. Coach Roger Canepa put a team together that he likes. Powerful, tough, strong team. And it showed tonight. They carried the rock. They carried the game. Bakersfield Christian showed up. But it was really Central Catholic all night. All right, now we're going to get a chance to see another team from Bakersfield, the Drillers of Bakersfield. Here is how they got here. They beat Clovis West, always a tough out. Then they beat Central Catholic. They have had an easy time getting up to the final against Mission Hills, but they prevailed 35 to 28. And they are led by a quarterback named Asani Rufus. They run the veer in the quarterback, absolute key. Outstanding on the ground, 1,647 yards, 29 touchdowns. Also a double threat through the air, over 1,500 yards passing. He's already a verbal commit to UNR as a safety, so he's a great defensive player as well. This guy can do it all, and he is truly the leader of his Bakersfield offense. All right, let's talk about the other half of this matchup, Del Oro. They come out of Loomis, California. That is up on the road to Sacramento, and here's how they got there. And they have had a lot of close games all year long, but the bottom line is they've won them. They got here by beating Sarah, and that was a tough game too, 28 to 20, and they are led by a running back, Dylan Kane Rath, and this guy is a guy who just simply carries the load. He carries the load. He carries the rock. This guy is a player that Casey Taylor said is the toughest player he has ever coached. Over 340 rushes, 1890 on the ground, 24 touchdowns. In an offense that runs the football, this is the feature back. Kane Rath has to have a big night tonight. Both teams come in here having only two losses all year long, but each comes in on a winning streak. One of 12 games, one of 10 games. Something has got to give the Veer always tough to defense, but they'll all very disciplined team. Great matchup in the D1 title game. You're watching Time Warner Cable SoCal 101. Now on Local On Demand, the holiday season is here, and it's time to get festive. Time Warner Cable brings you the sights, sounds, and tastes of the holiday season on Local On Demand with scrumptious holiday recipes, tips on how to decorate your home, the classic Yule Log with your favorite holiday music, and check out TWCHolidays.com for more holiday fun. From Thanksgiving to Hanukkah to Christmas, Time Warner Cable gets you into the holiday spirit. Now available on Time Warner Cable Local On Demand. Does your place need an upgrade? Spice it up with Apartment2B.com. Shop living room. Shop bedroom. Shop dining room. Shop kitchen. Shop home office. Apt2B.com, your local online resource for all your household needs. Hi, George Thompson, your friend in the diamond business. I travel the world and find the best quality diamonds for the best price. In Thailand, I have my own design studio where we cast the gold and set these diamonds and create our jewelry. Come and view over 2,000 wedding and engagement rings. The same quality as Macy's best one-fifth carat diamond studs that retail for $1,000 or only $250 every day here at George Thompson's. Cut out the middleman and save up to 75%. George Thompson Diamond Company, Las Posas and 101 in Camarillo. It's game day. A thousand years ago, you buckle the helmet, strap on the armor. Your stallion paws the ground, ready for the fight. You grip the lance tightly and realize game day might be your last day. The greatest hits of the Middle Ages. Special two, three, and four packs available with tickets as low as $35. A great holiday gift idea. Call one 888 we Go visit MedievalTimes.com. 
So we come now to the Division I championship game, Del Oro, who you see right here, and the Bakersfield Drillers, who are making an appearance in a state final for the first time in a long time. With more on that, here's the third member of our broadcast team, Kelly Tennant. Kelly? Hey guys, it has been a very long time. The Drillers actually have a state record, six state championships, but here's the catch. The last one was won in 1927. So it's been 86 years since that last win. This picture, you can see the team. It's It's been a while. Things are a little bit different, but this team really looking to make a change, get back on the map and win a seven state championship. By the way, Bakersfield Christian fans staying for this game to support their hometown team. All right, Kelly, thanks very much. We'll hear more from Kelly throughout this ballgame. There's Paul Gola. He is the coach at Bakersfield. This is his ninth year there. He's compiled a very enviable record, 93 up and just 22 down, 12 and 2 this year, and they come in here on a 10-game winning streak. So Paul Gola's got his team going in the right direction. On the other sideline, the head coach of the Del Oro Eagles, Casey Taylor. Casey, a no-nonsense kind of guy. His 12th year, and again, his record, 113 wins, just 28 defeats. He's okay. won the section we'll championship receive. on nine right, occasions. Let's have a great game. Was a finalist back in 2011 here in the state championships. Both these guys very excited to be coaching at their prospective schools. Casey Taylor, when he was recruited for the job, he went in for his interview. He got so excited and so worked up as he was working the whiteboard, he actually sweat through his shirt. That was his first head coaching job, and Coach Gola, he was coming back out after coaching in Texas, wanted to get back to California. He said they showed him around Bakersfield High School, and they talked to him about all that tradition that Kelly was talking about, the championships, the great players, all the people that have been through there, and how it fits with the community. He said it was a great fit. Great fit, and he's got his team in a great position. They are here in the state championship game in Division I. And they run a veer offense that is very difficult to defend. We'll talk more about that as we move along in this ball game. If you don't see it very much, it's very hard to prepare for. Here is some of the crowd at the Stop Up Center here in Carson. That's the Bakersfield sideline. Very nice crowd on hand, as there is on the other side of the field for Del Oro High School. They come out of Loomis, California. Loomis, uh, a city that has just kind of emerged in recent years. And here is their hometown crowd. They bust down here. They had a great going away party for their football team. The send off, and that's the group they call the Black Hole, the rooting section for the Golden Eagles. And this is the big one. They have the Open Division Championship, which is the biggest game in the States. But this is number two right here. This is the feature game tonight and a great game matchup between Del Oro and Bakersfield with different styles but the same toughness in that running game. So Del Oro will kick it away. The Drillers will have it to start things here. Derek Vickers is the deep man, and here is the opening kickoff. And it's driven end over end about the two-yard line. Vickers comes back to the 10, to the 20. Still at his feet at the 30. He dragged down as he crossed the 30-yard line about the 32. Here's a look at Asani Rufus. You can see his numbers, and impressive, really, both running the football and throwing the football. They're not defined as a passing team, but just when you think they're gonna run it at you, that's when they throw it. Exactly, and that's the change-up in that veer style, in the triple option, that they get you to bite up onto the run, and then you're in trouble. You have to stay home and play action. Marcus Bruce gets the start at running back, along with Vickers, and immediately, we have a stoppage. Dead ball, encroachment, defense. Well, again, we talked in the last game about this too, but early on, state championship game, big crowd, really has that championship ambiance, and uh, there's going to be a case of nerves. Absolutely a case of nerves. Young men that haven't necessarily been in this before. Del Oro was down here in 2011, but they haven't been down in two years. And remember, high school students turn over pretty quick. So Rufus, the guy at the helm of this veer, and he's the decision maker in this offense. Quarterback always is. They give straight ahead this time on the first option, and that was the fullback, Bruce. And crowd here thinks he thought they might have split the ball up, but a stop job up front by Tanner Woods. Here is the way Bakersfield comes to the dance offensively, and uh, they actually started Marcus Bruce and Jonathan Malone ahead of Hill and uh, Reddick. 
but they have running back by committee. They'll play several guys in that position, and they'll all carry the ball in this double wing set. And this time a keeper. With Rufus getting a little room, gets all the way to midfield, still on his feet out of bounds in Del Oro territory at the 48-yard line. Theron Hereford on the stop, a gain of 13. And here is Del Oro defensively, and they're very solid defensively, very experienced. Tyler Matier, he has been here before. Kyle Wells as well. That front seven for Del Oro, very physical. And watch the use of hands by that de defensive line, as well coached as any high school defensive line I have seen. So first down, they mark it right at midfield. And once again, it's Rufus. And Rufus stepping outside now. It's Rufus turns the corner. Gets down to the 30-yard line. Knocked out of bounds. Finally, Derek Vickers, a nice kick out block to spring Rufus for another outstanding game. One of the keys to playing a triple option is if you have a chance at a tackle, you have to make the tackle. Because it's such assignment-oriented football on defense, each guy has a gap. Each guy has an assignment. One guy gets the ball. One guy gets the pitch. If you have that tackle, you have to make it. That time, Rufus breaks the first tackle and gains big yards. Gain of 16. Here's a pitch to Vickers, and Vickers will pick up about three or four more, getting it down about the 31-yard line. Going to be gain of three. And you can see the speed of this Bakersfield team right off the bat. I talked to Coach Paul Gola, and he said that this team is as fast. He would compare it to any team in the country, not just the state, but any team in the country. A lot of 4-5, four, 4-4 four, four guys on this Bakersfield team. And that speaks to what we talked about, about being very difficult to prepare for. We'll talk a little bit more about that. You can't match the speed in practice. First throw of the game, Rufus. He throws underneath. The catch is made by Hayes. And Hayes still at his feet. He's the 10. He's the 5-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at about the 3-yard line. Michael Moore knocked him out. Kevin Hayes, a verbal commit to Oregon State. He plays receiver and corner. Six foot four. He's very elusive. Watch the move. He can step you outside and then shake it inside, putting a little extra mustard on it with the ball there, trying to shake it outside. But he's so physical, so fast, and so athletic, he can beat you in space. And it was Brian LeVay who knocked him out, not Michael Moore, as I mentioned. So first and goal at the three-yard line. Straight ahead this time, the fullback, Jeremiah Reddick. And Reddick is in. Touchdown. Outstanding second effort by Reddick. A senior, six foot, 200 pounds. Coach Gola told me today that Reddick is absolutely the best guy in the weight room. Just the dive. And who do you want taking the dive but your best weight room player? He gets held up at first but keeps driving. This kid has a 405 pound hang clean, which is a true test of athleticism and strength. And you can see it as he drove across the goal line. What an impressive first drive. The try for point is up and good by Coleman Olivas. And with just a minute and 38 seconds gone in this ball game, Bakersfield has jumped out in front seven to nothing on a very impressive drive. Del Oro will have it for the first time when we come back to the Stub Up Center. You're watching Time Warner Cable SoCal 101. These are Alex's devices. And these are Alex's devices powered by Time Warner Cable. Our app turns his Xbox 360, Roku, and laptop into TVs. It even turns his tablet and smartphone into remotes. And our internet makes it all instant. It's like magic. That shirt makes you look silly. We invent more ways to make your devices even better. Call 1-855-1TWC to get TV, internet, and phone starting at $79.99 a month. Upgrade and get a Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Friends help each other, like the friends I made at American Career College. We earned our vocational nursing diplomas in about 13 months. Now we work in medical facilities, doctor's offices, and we look out for each other. And with 35 years of ACC healthcare grads out there, 35,000 and counting, we're making new ACC friends wherever we go. It's really true that one change changes everything. And it all starts with a call. Call 866-896-3522 to learn about ACC's 13-month vocational nursing program. Call now. Welcome back, 7 to nothing. Drillers, an impressive first drive. And as you said, this is a committee, and uh, everybody was involved. Very fast. You saw them get out using all their athletes. Remember now, we saw Bakersfield Christian get up to the same side, side, the type of start last game. 
They are very good. This is the first time Del Oro has seen them in person. So now we have to see what the Golden Eagles can do on offense because that running game is the attitude of Del Oro. Deep end to receive the kick. You saw Jonathan Tuttle on the other side, Trey Udofia. And now we'll see what Del Oro can do on the offensive side of the ball. Michael Moore, he is the quarterback of this Del Oro team. End over end kick, and this is going to be Tuttle at about the two yard line. Tuttle cuts back, gets a little room still in his feet, 25, and dragged down at about the 28 yard line. So the Golden Eagles will go on offense for the first time. Get a look at Michael Moore, the quarterback. 4.4 GPA, so you're not going to outsmart him. No, this is a very bright kid. Comes in at six foot three. He's got good height. He's a basketball player too. Thrown for 29 touchdowns this year. He's been very efficient at that quarterback position. He has to manage the run game. Make sure he gets the Eagles in the right play. And to give on first down is to Canerath. Canerath is wrapped up right now. Gained maybe a yard. Offensively for. The Golden Eagles of Del Oro. We talked about Dylan Canerath, and he's going to carry the load. Trey Udofi is their big play guy. When they do throw it, he's the guy they're going to be looking for, especially deep. Very solid offensive line as well. It's an experienced Del Oro team. And they're going to have to be physical up front, but they're seeing a strange defense tonight, what they call a 1-5-5. Play fake and a bubble screen. The catch is made by Harrison, or rather by Udofia, and he's got no place to go. Picked up about three. Bakersfield defensively, and you talked about it, a very odd defensive alignment. You notice only one defensive lineman up there, Nigel Brooks. Everybody else listed as a linebacker or a DB. It's not a defense you see very often. It's the first game I have ever seen where there's a 1-5-5. But they have the athletes to play in space, so they're standing these guys up and moving around, making it more difficult for Del Oro to lock in on who they're going to block. So a third down play, and they need five. Moore to throw for the first time, has a man, and the catch is made. A nice diving catch that time, made by Tyler Matier. And Matier is the leading receiver on this team. An excellent player. He played in this game three years ago when they were here in 2000. Excuse me, two years ago when they were here in 2011. Here's a, a set. Year started. Let me just interrupt you. Here's an interesting set here. They got some offensive linemen flanked to the far side. So quick snap. Moore throws over the middle. Got a man. Catch is made by Udofia. Udofia will take it all the way down to the 11-yard line. That satellite look on offense, they figure if they're going to throw a 1-5-5 five, five at us, we're going to throw an Arena League set plus at them. Three linemen inside, Bryson Biggs in coverage, and he just can't match up in Udofi. I talked about it last game. So hard to cover man-to-man -man in the slot. A fantastic ball by Michael Moore and a great catch by Trey Udofia to pull that in. There's Kenrath this time, tries the left side, head down into the end zone, touchdown Golden Eagles. Do they have an answer? Yes. They said, you score first, we got that, we can do this. Darius Dallas trying to make the tackle, gets locked on, but Kenrath said, no way, I'm getting in the end zone. A great run by a guy who has been carrying this team as a tailback all year long. And you see the power and the speed of Del Oro that they can match up with Bakersfield. Try for point is up and it is good. And just like that, we have played two and a half minutes and we have a tie game tied at seven. So an outstanding start. Offense is so far leading the way for both teams. Nobody able to stop the other guys. We'll see how far that goes on when we come back. You're watching Time Warner Cable SoCal 101. What do you what do you want to do today? 
How about a hot air balloon adventure? Discover new music, see your favorite cartoon characters, visit some fishes, eat some fishes, work off the fishes. Maybe you need a good laugh, a good sandwich, or just feel like bouncing around. You can catch your favorite stars, train for the Olympics, or just check out some cool trains. They're available now on video on demand. Go to Channel One and choose local to find all your favorite lifestyle shows. Only on Time Warner Cable. The Mercedes-Benz Winter Event is here, and W.I. Simonson is celebrating by giving you the car you always dreamed about at a price you only dream of. Surprise the one you love this year with the new Mercedes-Benz from W.I. Simonson. Introducing the all-new 2014 CLA, starting at 29.9. The Winter Event is going on now at W.I. Simonson, your world-class Mercedes dealership. What a five-play answer after Bakersfield took the opening kickoff, ran it right down for a touchdown. Five plays, 73 yards. Extra point ties it at seven. An 11-yard run by that guy right there, Dylan Kainrath. He's been doing it all year long. Great power, great get-off by that offensive line for Del Oro. And remember this, too. Kainrath is doing this with a broken thumb, wearing a cast, and also with the brace on his knee. He's been playing hurt all year long but playing tough. Coach Casey Taylor said, the toughest guy I ever coached in 12 years as a head coach at Del Oro, which has turned out some tough players. I'll say they have. So to kick it off, Mason Hughes for the second time in two and a half minutes. He drives this one pretty good, drives it away from Vickers, and it's into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the last touchdown run. This is just a power formation, and Kainrath made it good. Two guys in front leading the power up. Kainrath just has to make one cut, get his pad level down, and they're blowing Bakersfield off the ball. Now, Bakersfield, not a big team, just a very fast team. So Del Oro is going to have the edge in size. That time they had it in leverage, and Kainrath taking advantage of it and showing that toughness. Now Bakersfield has the edge in speed, so they have the ball for the second time. We'll see where they go out of the Veer formation. Asani Rufus is the quarterback. And again, this time, again, to the first man. Not a lot doing there, as it was Marcus Bruce on the carry. And Bakersfield doesn't just have the matchup in speed, they also have the matchup in scheme. That triple option, as we talked about, so very hard to defend. Coach Gola trying to put his athletes out there in space. And when you have to re read and react and you've got the speed, it gives you an edge. Rufus this time on the keep, trying to cut it back, got stood up. Big time stop that time by Elias Campos. And you can see the toughness of this Delaware defensive front. Watch how they strike with their hands. They close the gaps, they try to gap pressure, and then they swarm around the ball carrier. Rufus, a very good football player, and they are trying to make sure that they keep him hemmed in. Third down and four now. Rufus can make changes at the line of scrimmage. They bring a man in motion. And they fake it to him. Now Rufus going the other way, trying to get to the edge, and he will. He's to 30. He's to 35 to 40. To the 45 midfield, 45, cuts back, and down as he crossed the 40-yard line at the 38. Another big gain by the quarterback, Asani Rufus. When I talked to Casey Taylor earlier in the week, he said that it's going to have to be a big game for Kyle Wells. He's playing that outside linebacker spot. He was in position, but the athleticism and the pure speed of Asani Rufus is what broke that play. He got the edge, took it, and got big yardage on the carry. 33 yards on the play, and they mark it right at the 40-yard line of Del Oro. Rufus again, this time the pitch back, and nothing doing. Well defended that time. Lamicia Hall with the carry, and might have gained a yard, maybe two. Lamicia Hall, coach told me, has the best straight arm in the whole Central Valley. This time he tries to throw it, but instead Justin Barrage is there. 
You see the straight arm come out. Raj gets his hands on him and pulls him down anyway, so he broke through the great Central Valley straight arm. Here's a quick pass to Vickers, and the catch is made out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. He's close to a first down. So many times when you have a quarterback that's great at the beer, they can run the ball, they can dish it, they can run the option, but they can't throw. I'm telling you right now, Sonny Rufus can spin it. He's accurate with it. It's a tight spiral, and he's on the money. Short of the first down by a little over two yards. It'll be third down. This time Rufus on the keep again. Looks for the pitch now, decides to tuck it away, cuts it inside, first down and a lot more. Down to about the 16 yard line before he's stopped by Campos. A huge block that time by number 54, Dylan Little on that right side. He engages and continues to drive downfield. That is outstanding effort, especially considering Dylan Littles was a wide receiver who moved to the offensive yeah. line position. How do you like that? 16 yards on that carry by Rufus, and he's getting in chunks. Give this time to Bruce, and he stopped immediately. Right at the 15-yard line. And Tanner Woods, another three-year starter on that defensive line. He was all city in Sacramento. A great player, a guy that's been a leader for this defensive football team. Give him a yard, it'll be second and nine. Vickers, quick screen this time. And going into the end zone easily is Lamicio Hill. No problem whatsoever. Touchdown, Bakersfield. And this is where the speed makes a difference in the game because if you pack people in, and you get them all around the ball, the defense has to match. Although they can keep a little bit of leverage, watch how quickly they get outflanked on the outside. Speed getting to the outside. Derek Vickers with a great block out in front, and then it's a walk into the end zone for Hill. That kind of speed, if you pack people in and then explode out, you immediately gain leverage, and that's hard to beat. Another very impressive drive for Bakersfield. And we've had three touchdowns in a little bit less than seven minutes. A defensive struggle so yeah. far. Well, so far, Del Oro simply has not had an answer for the Veer. And Coach Gola has to be happy about that. Remember, Del Oro doesn't face a lot of Veer. Actually, in the section that they're playing, and there's a lot of spread offenses, a lot of modern football looks, some power games, some running games. But when you have bunch formations, you have athletes like this out in front that can use that speed to the edge it immediately stretches you and it puts you in trouble. They're gonna have to go in and figure out a way to draw it up on the whiteboard and say, this is how we outflank that. This is how we keep it leveraged because they have to be worried about the run inside so they've gotta pack the box, but they also can't expose themselves in the edge. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, that's the thing about the veer. I mean, you gotta take a chance one way or another. Yeah, you, you always have to have assignment football, so it's one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board. But then if you have a quarterback like Rufus who can also throw as accurately and as quickly as he does, it really stretches a defense quick. So once again, it'll be Coleman Olivas to do the kicking. And he drives this one. And there will be no return. Right now, let's take it to the sideline once more. And Kelly Tennant. Te Kelly, what do you Thanks, got? Thanks, guys. You mentioned earlier about Dylan Canerath being hurt, having to play with his arm rats because of that broken thumb. And I talked to the training staff. His nickname is Princess because he's always hurt, and they're always having to tend to his many wounds. But they complimented him, saying he's always the one grinding, fighting through all the injuries, and that he's so fun to work with. He's like a princess from Shrek, some kind of ogre yeah. princess, yeah. because he is tougher than a bag of nails. So now Del Oro will see if they can answer once again. They give it to Kane Rath straight ahead. Kane Rath busts it. He's at the 40. He's on 45 midfield. One man to beat. And he gets it at the 35-yard line. It was Bryson Biggs with a saving tackle. And nodding his head. Yeah, I know, he says. He pops through that line of scrimmage again. Immediate contact. Get the bodies in front. You pull somebody out, and you run the power game. Kane Rath hits it. Downhill, north and south, exactly what you're going to do. He got the absolute utmost yardage out of that play. 
He's not going to beat Bakersfield in a long-term foot race, but the quickness to get to the line of scrimmage, to find the seam, and to hit it full speed is what makes that play pay off. He had a great kick-out block also to spring him. So the ball at the 35-yard line, one play, 45 yards for Kamrak. Here's a give this time to the backup, the tier. Well, the tier actually not usually, was usually playing, but not only a running back spot, usually plays at the tight end spot. Took the handoff that time. Got about a yard, maybe two. Kane Rath got a spell for one play. Yeah. You know, the big run, huge dash early on, a lot of adrenaline. In this game, that adrenaline will make you feel like you're sucking wind. You can't get enough oxygen. You get that big run out of the way, you sit for one play, and immediately you get Princess back in the game. Well, they gave him tier three yards. It'll be second and seven. Now they go with the power eye once again. Here's Kane Rath. Another time, and Kane Rath this time fights forward inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. That's a case of there not being very much, and he made something out of it. Momentum completely stopped. What does he do? He keeps bucking. They say he's a cowboy. Wranglers, boots, jeans, the whole nine yards. And he kept bucking in the hole and picked up yards he wouldn't have otherwise had. Jonathan Malone was actually hanging off him at the time. So it'll be third down now and three. Two tight ends of the game for Delora. Give it to Canreth again. First down and more. Almost broke it inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. Gain of 10. Kevin Hayes is saving tackle. And that 1-5-5 defense is supposed to confuse an offense. What it's done for Deloro is given them the angle, the leverage. As Bakersfield is trying to react up to make the tackle, now the linemen from Del Oro get an angle on that shoulder and are able to turn and move people up front. Again, two tight ends. And again, a power formation, and again, it's Kane Rath, and he, again, keeps moving, gets the 15-yard line, he got four. Derek Vickers on the stop. Just keeps on churning, keeping that pad level low. Trusting your blockers, trusting the big guys up front are going to get it moved. That's the key to vertical running. If you doubt, if you don't believe they're going to get it done, you tend to bounce outside. But Kane Rath obviously has faith in the big bodies up front. I'll tell you, the stars are showing up in this game, aren't no they? Doubt. This time they spread it out a little bit more. Give it to Kane Rath once again, and he busted. Kane Rath all the way to the one yard line. Did he get in? No, he stopped short at the one yard line. Well, he's making room where there is no room. It was like a pileup at a NASCAR event. You see all these cars stacked around, and all of a sudden, boom, he pops out. Nowhere to go, just gets low, gets leverage, keeps those legs driving, and finds a scene. This time they hurry to the line of scrimmage, get the ball snapped, give it to Kane Rath, and he's in. Touchdown, Del Oro. Again, the answer by Del Oro is, we got that. I like it. Two offensive teams, power running, and just exerting their will when they have the football. I'm telling you, what a football game so far. It might be the first team to get a stop is going to win this. Yeah, game. really. Get up to the line of scrimmage, get down, and get off. That is power, short yardage football, and Del Oro at their finest. Time for point. My hum is up and good, and we're tied. At 14, and we still have two minutes and seven seconds to play in the first quarter. So you get down on the line of scrimmage. These guys are great at striking with their hands. And look at the movement on that front. A lot of white shirts already standing in the end zone because of that vertical push. A great contact, but Kane Rath still finding a way to cross the goal line. Big strong guy. And he comes in at six foot 185. You wouldn't think of him as the big goal back. No. 230, but he is physical and tough. Yeah, he plays big. He plays very big. Yeah. He plays with those shoulders square. He plays with great leverage, great pad level. And all of that is so essential. When you look at Del Oro, you see a very well coached football team on the line, in alignments. The way that they play their technique is very good. They consider the team 
a team of overachievers. There's not a lot of D1 prospects that come out of Del Oro. They're unsung guys, but they are guys that play together very well. They play efficiently. And Casey Taylor has his boys coached up and ready for tonight. Yeah, that's what he said about his team. He said, we have good high school players who just overachieve. And that's exactly what we're seeing here tonight. And that's a sign of great coaching. You know, you could say players overachieve, but great coaches get their players to play at peak performance. Hume sends this one to the one-yard line. Vickers coming back. Vickers with a little gap again to the 30, still on his feet, still on his feet at the 45 midfield. Now it's a race, he's got a blocker in front of him, has to slow up, and he's caught from behind at the 24 yard line. But what a huge run by Vickers, 76 yards on that kick return, and here we go again. As if the drillers' offense wasn't already efficient enough, now you get Derek Vickers on the kickoff return and just look at the pure athleticism he, he finds a way to weave to a seam and then runs through tackles in the end travis newman gets him down but an outstanding return great play by the guy that they call lightning why not two kick returns 105 yards in this game and we're not the end of the first quarter yet so now it's rufus taking over once again he's had a great game so far here he is giving it off to Reddick and Reddick not going to get much, maybe two. How about Rufus' start, though? He's had five carries, 82 yards, three of three passing for 50 yards and a touchdown. That's pretty good. I believe the term for that is efficient. Yes. He's been very efficient at that quarterback position. Second down and eight. Here's a bunch formation. They've thrown out of this formation before. This time they give the first man Reddick, and Reddick's going to get the first down all the way down to the six yard line. Reddick coming up doing his best impression of Dylan Kainrath that time, carrying people, finding a seam, just driving for yards. The difference being, Reddick at the top end is a 4 5 40 guy, very gifted, very fast, and you can see the physicality in the way he moves the ball. Reddick comes out, Bruce comes in now. First and goal at the six. And it's Rufus keeping and Rufus scoring. Touchdown, Bakersfield. How do you stop that? If you're a defensive player and you're out there in space all by yourself with the quarterback who's going on to the next level as a safety, and he's got the ball with an option to pitch it. Dive, nope. Watch this, walk out. Nope, sorry, you can't get me, too bad. And, you know, the victim is Justin Barrage. He's out there trying to defend a guy who is so athletic and so gifted with an option to pitch the ball. You've got to make a decision. I'm going to hit the ball carrier or I'm going to tackle the pitch, and that's it, and go with it. And, you know, all I can say is he must be a heck of a safety because, to me, just yeah. on the little I've seen of him, this guy looks like he could play quarterback in Nevada's system. No doubt. And that pistol system it would definitely work, but you watch him, just that fake pitch, and the athleticism is just there. You can see guys who move so fluidly or so gifted, and Rufus just stands out to the eye. He is a gifted athlete, and you can see it in the smoothness, the way that he moves. Well, we're at about a three-point-per-minute pace in this game. <laughs> that one set up by a 76-yard kick return, and it only took three plays. Right now, neither defense has found an answer to stop these offenses. Del Oro doing it tough yards on the ground, great leverage, getting the blocks up front. And Bakersfield, you know, this game as advertised, Bakersfield doing it with the speed and with the agility off the edge. So Udofi and Tuttle are the deep men now for Del Oro. And as we mentioned earlier, Udofi's a guy who can go get it in a hurry also. About the 49-yard pass for Moore. Only passed four by four so far in the ball game. And the drillers and all those Bakersfield fans are felt feeling. End of a run kick, and the Dolphy is not going to have a chance. So it'll come out to the 20 yard line, and that's where Del Oro will start. 53 ticks remaining here in the first quarter. 
you can see that this is like a prize fight, just punch, counter punch. And it's the team that staggers first. You see the knees buckle first that might be in trouble because it doesn't look right now like either one of these offenses is slowing down. And, and you said, and there's no jabbing. It's just power punches. Yeah, no jabbing at all. They are going for the big, the uppercut, the big punch every time. Here's a give to Kane Rath, and this time they get Kane Rath. They got him turned around and stopped him short of the line of scrimmage. Lost him about a yard. Still took three guys on the tackle, all said and done. You had Malone there. Here's the same set they threw a 49-yard pass off of. Two offensive linemen to the right side, more straight back to pass, and we got a flag and a procedure call. Yeah, the trick is when you get into these trick formations set up for this game. Dead ball, false start, offense, five yards. You have to make sure you get set. They're obviously doing it to try to expose that Bakersfield defense, get them out of sorts, make sure, make, cause them alignment problems. But you can't sacrifice by penalizing yourself by creating penalties. You have to get out, get set, and then run your play. Otherwise, rather than being a bonus play, it becomes a detriment to what you're trying to do. So now they're looking at a second and 14. And they give it once again. Crane Rath, or Kane Rath, rather, and uh, Bakersfield wraps him up. Jonathan Malone on the stop that time. So two times in a row, they've stopped Kane Rath. And Malone has been very physical on the inside. I think he's a very strong football player on that defensive side. And with that, we come to the end of the first quarter, and what a first quarter it was. A look at the scoreboard shows the Bakersfield Drillers 21 and the Del Oro Golden Eagles 14. Second quarter action coming up on the other side of this. You're watching Time Warner Cable SoCal 101. Welcome to Time Warner Cable. 100 megs, huh? Excuse me? I'm a psychic. I read minds. No way. Yes way. You were going to tell me that with Time Warner Cable, I can get internet speeds up to 100 megs. You're good. What did you did know? Did I know that Time Warner Cable offers internet at an everyday low price of $14.99 a month? All I have to do is call 1-855-1-TWC? What about now? You're thinking, I don't know what you're thinking. But I do. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC to get everyday low price internet for $14.99 a month. Upgrade to get a Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Whether you're looking for carpet, wood, laminate, vinyl, or tile, you can trust the Finmark brothers, Randy, Glenn, and John. For over 34 years, Finmark has been the best in the business. They have their own team of installers, so you can rest assured they do it right. Flooring is our only business, so you get the largest selection, knowledgeable service, and the best prices. Schedule your free estimate today at Finmark Carpet One, home of the beautiful guarantee. Don't like it? We will replace it for free. Call for details. CIF High School Football Championships are coming to SoCal 101, and Time Warner Cable is bringing you every run, every pass, and every touchdown. Takes it for the touchdown. Go to twcsportschannel.com for air times and channels of all our postseason coverage. Time Warner Cable, television home of the CIF. We welcome you back. We start the second quarter, the first quarter, all offense. We had 321 yards of offense combined in the first 12 minutes. Well, we talked about punch and counter punch. This is an opportunity for Bakersfield to throw a big punch on defense on third and 13. More play fake. Blitz comes. He's in trouble. Wrapped him up. Back at the 10-yard line. And that is huge. This is going to be the first defensive stop of the game. And we've seen how well Bakersfield offense operates. Nigel Brooks finding a way to get in the backfield and cause a negative yardage play for Del Oro. You see that speed just getting through there, finding gaps. Bakersfield bringing more defenders than Del Oro had in there to block. So Olivas will have to punt from his own end zone.
Hayes and Vickers, the deep man, and this is going to be Hayes who gets a running start at it. The 30, the 25, tries to get the outside, can't do it. Knocked out of bounds the 20 yard line, but a good return off a line drive and rather short punt. Tyler Mateer might have saved a touchdown. So now it'll be Asani Rufus once again, and he's done everything so far. Why not again? So far, he has been unstoppable. Starts the game off at the keep, wraps it the other way, breaks off big chunks. He's just got the speed to get the outside, and he's a triple threat when you add that dive and then the pass. He's an impressive athlete out there. Now he's exactly the guy in this system I would want slinging the rock. And he's playing well at the right time, right at the end of the season here. Comes off a perfect game last week. This time a long count. They've got Del Oro jumping around. And it's Rufus on the keeper again. Rufus to the outside. Look out. 15 to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Bakersfield. Unbelievable how quick that cut was. Travis Newman was playing that defensive end position. And Asani Rufus threatened at the inside. Now understand, Travis Newman at 6 foot 4, 190. Coach Casey Taylor told me this kid is very athletic, a first year starter. But Asani Rufus made him look like he was playing at a different level. I mean, that is really impressive. Now the try for point. So 56 seconds into the second quarter, it's a 28 to 14 lead. And Asani Roop is picking up right where he left off last week when he was 10 of 10 passing and rushed for another 172 yards. We're coming back. You're watching Time Warner Cable SoCal 101. These are Alex's devices. And these are Alex's devices powered by Time Warner Cable. Our app turns his Xbox 360, Roku, and laptop into TVs. It even turns his tablet and smartphone into remotes. And our internet makes it all instant. It's like magic. That shirt makes you look silly. We invent more ways to make your devices even better. Call 1-855-1TWC to get TV, internet, and phone starting at $79.99 a month. Upgrade and get a Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. When it comes to making your wish list for the holidays, there has always been one special item at the top. This year, make your wish come true at the limited engagement winter event going on now at Infinity of Montclair. Lease a new 2013 G37 Sport sedan from only $249 per month. Or a new 2014 QX60 for just $399 per month. The limited engagement winter event. Now is the best time to turn your wish into a new Infinity at Infinity of Montclair or online at infinityom.com. We welcome you back. It's a 28 to 14 ball game. We're just underway in the second quarter. It has been all Bakersfield. How about this 21 yard run, Mike? How about the fake inside? I mean, he almost broke the knees of Travis Newman on that fake. And it, it's so athletic. I talked about how smooth he is and the quickness. Asani Rufus is over there with his guys. Go, do you see what I did to him? Do you see what I, you see me put that move on him? Well, and as we said earlier, last week he had what was considered, and I'm not exaggerating, a perfect game. He ran for 72 yards, had a touchdown on 18 carries. He was 10 of 10 passing for 224 yards. That was last week in their win to get here. And so far today, he's rushed seven times for 190 yards, 109 yards, and two touchdowns, and he's three for three passing for 50 yards and another touchdown. Yeah, from what I've seen so far, I do think it might be a way for UNR to put him at the safety position because he's been very impressive at that quarterback position. And you said it earlier, it looks like he can throw the ball a little bit too. He can spin it. I mean, this kid can spin it. He's got a good arm. Line drive and a rather short kick taken this time by Udofia. Udofia can scoot. Bounce it outside. Still on his feet. Look out. This is a foot race now. One man to beat. Udofia takes him on and loses. Knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line, but another big return, and Del Oro in good field position. Dion Nobles made the stop. This time, Udopia said, Derek Vickers who? I can do that, too. Great front wedge by Del Oro. The spin move is what caps it off because he should have been tackled. 
instead instinctively with great vision puts the spin on and picks up the extra yardage on the end. Outstanding play by your athlete on that return team. 55 yards on that return. So we've seen big play after big play. Now we'll see if Delora can capitalize on it. They were stopped in their last possession for the first time. Give it to Kane Rath straight ahead. Kane Rath gets about five. And Delaro's philosophy is to put more bodies at the point of attack than the defense can provide inside. And so you see the motion coming inside. You see the double tight end sets. You see all the big bodies inside. They're going to find a way to push the pile and create creases for their running backs to hit. So it'll be second down at five. Time to give to Kane Rath again. Kane Rath gets forward to about the 31 yard line. I think that's going to be enough for first down, depending on the spot. Great push on a front side zone play. Again, those big bodies up front, the offensive line for Del Oro getting a push. It took Nigel Brooks to get him down at the end of the play, but Kane Rath just following the lead blockers. And again, in that zone scheme against this odd defense that Bakersfield is running. All these guys have to do is step to a zone and pick up the first dangerous jersey across their face. Go in the power formation once again here. And they give it to Kane Rath again, not this time. Breaking through that time was Nigel Brooks. And it's not the first time he's done that. A loss of about four. Yeah, Nigel Brooks, the only true defensive lineman on this team. He actually hadn't played football since the eighth grade. He, had, he was in a back brace for an entire year. Obviously, he's gotten better since that. He found a gap, shot through, and made the tackle on Kane Rath. But he is getting better all the time. Coach Gola said he is gifted big time and likely to be a college prospect next season. And they did give progress back to the line of scrimmage, so it's second down and 10. Give it to Kane Rath again. Not much. Got about two. Jonathan Malone on the tackle. And this is time when you can look for some kind of play action out of Del Oro. They've been pounding the ball inside. I would look for them to give you some kind of look or handoff, some kind of dive fake, some kind of draw fake here. Just a straight pass, throws over the middle, catch is made this time for a first down by Tyler Mateer. What do I know, right? Well, there you are. You've been pounding inside. What do you do? You come back with a four wide receiver set and throw the ball. It's the first time I've ever heard you be wrong. <laughs> a great job by Michael Moore, just dropping back on rhythm and throwing a perfect strike to the outside. And again, Mateer has been their go-to guy. He was, he's. He's been a three-year starter for this offense. He's been a guy you feel comfortable with as a quarterback. It's time to go right back to Kane Rath, and Kane Rath gets across the 15-yard line to about the 14. Give him about two on the play. Mackenzie McCoy on the stop. And you know what I like about both offenses is they have just enough mix-up to keep you honest, to move the chains. They've shown enough of a different look to keep you on your toes as a defense. Second out and eight, the ball at the 14 yard line. This time, Udofi is split to the far side. And they'll give it to Kane Rath again. Kane Rath doesn't get much this time, about a yard or two. Jonathan Malone again on the stop. Not getting the same push out of that front. It looks like the pad level for Del Oro has come up a little bit. Sometimes as you start to search, start to try to read your block, you start to lose your technique because you're trying to think through it. Instead, Del Oro needs to continue to be physical, to stay low, keep leverage, and push that Bakersfield defense off. So another critical third down play. And they need six. Play fake this time. Morgan throw slips. Now he gets up, throws. Incomplete. Matera had it in his hands. And started to think about, I think, where he was going rather than catching the football and tucking it away. And if Moore didn't slip on that play, he had Justin Gazinaga wide open at the goal line. See Moore coming out, 
and he slips right there. If he has the time to look back inside, if he doesn't feel pressure, he has an easy six points. So 29-yard field goal for Mason Humes, and it's a line drive, but it got there, and that's the bottom line. So Del Oro does answer, at least to a degree. It's a 28 to 17 ball game now. Still a long way to go. Six minutes, 56 seconds remaining to be played here in the first half. We'll be back. You're watching Time Warner Cable SoCal 101. Hi, and thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Rosales, and you're watching On Campus right here on Time Warner Cable. On Campus is your all-access pass featuring the top student athletes and prep sport programs throughout Southern California. Go on location with us as we showcase some of the best high school campuses in SoCal and what makes them so unique. Check out On Campus, Tuesdays at 8, only on SoCal 101. It's not the Strip. It's not Las Vegas. It's not even Nevada. It's the Lobster Buffet at Valley View Casino and Hotel with hundreds of delicious choices, unlimited lobster nightly, endless desserts, and your first buffet is free when you join the Players Club. Plus, with your Players Club card, you'll enjoy generous rewards like free slot play, concerts, hotel suites, free dining, and more. It's classic Las Vegas style, and it's only at Valley View Casino and Hotel, San Diego's favorite. So now it'll be the Bakersfield Drillers, and uh, so far, Del Oro has been able to do nothing to stop them. Four possessions, four touchdowns for the Drillers. Del Oro putting three on the board with a 29-yard field goal by Mason Hughes. You know how you have that dream, like you've got a test coming up and you didn't study at all? Right about now, that's what Del Oro's defense feels yep. like as they face Bakersfield. They don't have any answers, and not only don't they have the answers, they don't know what the questions are because this team is so athletic. All right, so we've already had two big kick returns, one by Derek Vickers, who stands deep now at the two-yard line to receive this kick. Oh, he's not going to get a chance. This one is pooched and handled by the up man. And we're going to get a 15-yard penalty for Logan. running over the guy, yeah, I believe. Logan, Logan Hurst. A little overzealous. He was thinking he was going for the ball. All right, let's take it out of the field now. Kelly Tennant. Kelly? You guys, we've been talking about Asani Rufus over and over. Obviously, he's a fun one to watch, but what I love is how humble he is. He was talking earlier this week about how he's only good because the rest of his teammates make it so easy for him. Talk about a stand-up kid. I'll say. I think he's better than that. <laughs> I think he makes it pretty easy for the guys around him, too. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. That's always a sign of a great player. That absolutely is. Well, in high school, so many times you see your best athlete at that quarterback position because that's everything revolves around that position. You can do a lot from there. And Bakersfield has some incredible athletes, but they've definitely found the man to pull the trigger. And you don't want to give them field position like this. They're already in Del Oro territory just across midfield. That's where they'll start. There's a pass this time, and the pass is caught and hanging on to Vickers for dear life. was Theron Hereford. And it was everything he could do to finish that sleigh ride with a tackle. And, and, and we're looking at Rufus's arms as a quarterback throwing absolute strikes. You see Vickers out there absolutely towing Hereford along. Gain of 20 on first down there at the 29-yard line. The give this time is to Bruce, and Bruce picks up about six, maybe seven yards on the play, and everything they're doing is working. It's just not fair. I mean, to have that many options. This is the perfect offense for the athletes they have on the field. Second down of three. And the give straight ahead once again to Bruce, and Bruce has a first down and a lot more. Down to about the 14-yard line. And watch the dive. Everything gets washed up in the dive. You have to stay home if you're a defensive end or outside linebacker because you know that the pitch or the keep can both come at you. It makes it so difficult to defend. 
Vickers on the pitch this time. Vickers can't handle it. And it's picked up by Delaro. A huge break for the Golden Eagles as they recover and take it up to the 29-yard line. It was Tyler Matier. Well, we said the first one whose knees buckled. Deloro buckled first. But Bakersfield has now buckled last. Turnovers are huge in championship games. Nice job getting the pitch out. Good read by the quarterback. But if you're Vickers, you've got to watch it in. You have to look that ball into your hands. He was thinking about how he was going to set up his move. Instead, he should have thought about catching that ball first. You see that head focus downfield instead of on his hands. So Del Oro with a break. They'll have it at the 26-yard line is where they'll mark it. As Bakersfield is just about to go in once again. They give it to Canerath on first down, and he gets about four. And to go back to that fumble, it was a great job by Justin Barrage noticing the ball was on the ground and keeping Vickers from getting back on top of it. Without that, Matier could not have gotten the recovery. Smart play. You can see the intelligent play on both sides of the ball, but that was great by Barrage. Yeah, both these teams very well coached, and you're right, very heads-up play. Five on first down. It'll be second down and five. Canerath again, this time gets a little bit of a lean, but only picked up about two, and they are riding that horse. They are going to pound him. He has been the go-to guy. He has been the ball carrier for this team all year long. He averages 20 to 30 carries a game, but he had 53 versus Granite Bay, and I asked Casey Taylor, I said, how many is he gonna get tonight? He said, hey, if we have to beat that number, we'll beat that number. <laughs> Well, he's durable, to say the least. 18 carries so far in this game for 117 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Play fake this time. Moore rolls out, throws underneath. Catch is made by Udolfia. Udolfia trying to shake a tackle and couldn't do it. And he lost some yardage, actually. So much speed to get to the ball on that Bakersfield defense. Nathaniel Stancil was there first on the scene to see him run through. Doesn't get the tackle, but then Reddick comes up with a tackle from behind. Excuse me, I thought it was Stancil. It's actually Kevin Hayes that was there first, playing that corner position, but containing, keep driving to the ball, and you see the reaction to the ball. You know, speed, you can coach a little bit. You can take a kid from a 4.65 to a 4.6, but real speed is genetic, and there's no teaching it. So Mason Humes to Pond, he'll be kicking to Vickers once again. Vickers at the 33. Trying to get to the outside and can't do it. Nice tackle and the flag is down as well. I just talked about Bakersfield flying to the ball. That time Jonah McKeebrey absolutely flew to the football, but Bakersfield with an illegal block in the back are going to take the penalty for it. And it was right at first contact. Our referee in this game, Rick Sherwood. Adam Ryder coming up at halftime. Bakersfield High coming back to the championship for the first time since 1927. During the return, block in the back, 10 yards, first down. Also all the highlights, all the numbers from the first half, and there have been a lot of numbers and a lot of highlights. Yes, there have been. And they said that 1927 was the last true state championship is what Bakersfield that, will tell you. That's right, that's right. Rufus directing a little traffic here. They may have too many men in the line of scrimmage. And the give straight ahead, nothing doing this time. Reddick, the ball carrier. Seemed to be a little confusion there. Not as crisp on that series as they had been coming out. They've been very good at the line of scrimmage, playing with tempo. This time, they need to get it together. Again, confusion in terms of alignment. Some kind of a bunch formation here. And Rufus on the keep. And Rufus broke the first tackle and then was really hit hard and almost spit the ball up by Justin Burridge. Burridge showing up on offense, on defense. A nice job of staying home and making the tackle, being very solid as he butts up in the middle. 
Excellent job of securing the tackle, wrapping up a good athlete. So third down, they need four. Rufus this time on the pitch to Vickers, and Vickers going to get the first down and a lot more. All the way up to about the 44-yard line. That was the same play they fumbled on last time. They got it right this time. Tyler Matera on the tackle. And here's the nasty part of this. Rufus is a 4-5, high 4-4 guy. Vickers is a 4-3 guy. Yeah. So you're going from fast to even faster on the outside. And they get the edge of a hurry. First down, the ball at the 43-yard line. Rufus again on the key. Tries to cut it back. It's across midfield with 49. Picked up about seven. Travis Newman on the stop. But the stops are always coming at the second level. Second level safeties, DBs trying to make those tackles. Second down, three. Rufus this time on the keep, and it was well defended that time by the Golden Eagles and a loss of a play of a yard. Jonah McBree. And a nice job by Theron Hereford on the outside. McAbree. Slow playing it. I just want to correct his name, McAbree. Watch Hereford slow play it, forcing Rufus to keep that ball. He knew that he was getting help coming in from the inside. So he did an excellent job of slowing Rufus down just enough. That's one of those adjustments that you make as a coach on the sideline to try to figure out a scheme and help your team defense out. So now another third down play. They've made them all so far, and this time a little shovel pass off a busted play, and Vickers can't do anything. And finally, Del Oro's managed to contain Bakersfield. And Elias Campos right there to make the tackle. Again, miscues in big games, very difficult. These two teams are the pinnacle of the Division I in the state of California, and neither team is going to let you get away with a mistake like that. Well, we got whistles blow, and with 53 seconds left, a timeout called by Del Oro. Del Oro is still very much in this ball game. It's only an 11-point game. Oh, even absolutely. Though, even and though we, it appears Bakersfield's dominating. And, and we didn't see them making any stops. Now they're making stops on that defense for Bakersfield. So we're seeing the defense adjust and the defense adapt to what they're seeing. This is the second game of a long weekend of state football championships. We've already had the Division Four title go into the books, and it was Central Catholic off a of repeat. It didn't look that way early on, though, as Bakersfield Christian took an early lead, then this fumble leading to a Central Catholic touchdown and another miscue on the high snap, a safety there. Losing the handle there, an interception here, and that was the story of the game. The running game then took over, and Central Catholic is the champion for the second year in a row. The Central Catholic definitely earned it. Bakersfield Christian, I talked about it, can't make mistakes in big games. A few too many mistakes, but this is their first time at the dance. Next year, the party dress is going to look better. They're going to feel more comfortable. And they, if they can get back in this game, they will be a force to reckon with. Low snap on the punt, a sidewinding kick, short kick. But it does take a Del Oro bounce, and it will land somewhere near the 15-yard line. What started off as great field position for Del Oro with one bounce turned into a long field to drive in 43 seconds. Yep. And not only did it bounce and take away a lot of yards, but it also took a lot of time off the clock as it rolled. So they do have a long field. They need 84 yards here, and they have 43 seconds to get it. And again, they don't match up speed-wise. Bakersfield is a faster team, but what they can do is utilize technique, utilize the field, and try to hit vertical seams, try to create one-on-one -on -one matchups where they can create a little bit of cushion with their receivers. Moore straight back, airs it out for Udofia, and even as fast as he is, he can't catch up to that one. And a flag is down in the backfield. So that's going to help Del Oro right there. That's a gift of 15 yards on a personal foul. Got a roughing the passer. Michael Moore steps back to throw, and it clearly was a late shot by Jeremiah Reddick. So a free 15. Roughing the passer on the defense. 
First down. That'll move it all the way up to the 31-yard line. 38 ticks remaining. Here's the first penalty against Bakersfield. Here's a screen. Well executed. Kane Rath to the 45 midfield out of bounds, the 47 yard line, 31 seconds remaining. Great concept on the play, knowing that Bakersfield is gonna be dropping deep, a semi-prevent type of coverage. You see that second level all dropping off, linebackers plugging, it leaves a gap in the middle. Kane Rath, if he gets one big block, he gets a good chance to break one downfield. I love the great stiff arm behind him with the broken thumb. Johnson had an opportunity to spring him and really get big yardage, but you saw the speed of Bakersfield. And a timeout, I believe, has been taken here by Del Oro, I th although I think the Del Oro coaches are saying we didn't call a timeout. There's a look at Coach Taylor, and he's saying, I didn't do that. No reason to call a timeout. That's right. Because the ball's out of bounds. You saw him, I was signaling in plays. You look at Del Oro in their season, 13 and two on the year. They lose to De La Salle and there's no shame in that. Notre Dame, another good team. They won four games by three points or less. And so a tight game is nothing to them. They brought the house this time and the pass was at the feet of Kane Rath. They're trying to set up another screen, the same screen we saw before, but too much pressure by Jonathan Malone. Again, you see that speed and the athleticism by Bakersfield. Malone just getting upfield in a hurry and three or four blue shirts all around Michael Moore. Lamicio Hill also there. Just, I mean, speed is hard to deal with. Yeah, it is. Blitz comes again, quick pass to Udofia. Udofia shakes a tackle and he gets it down to the 32 yard line. Still 21 seconds remaining. We talked about Udofia being a game breaker. He's got those goods. Absolutely, he's the go-to guy on this defense. And Coach Taylor said he gets better every week. You can see it here. Great athleticism, great concentration to catch that ball and make the miss. You know, we're not talking about your average athlete. Marcus Watkins, very good. He's worked his way into a starting spot, been great out there. But Udopia said, I got some moves on this side too. So plenty of time. This time a five-man rush and in trouble is born, and he's wrapped up way back in midfield. And the guy who made the play was Bryson Briggs. And this is where that multiple look on defense comes in. You're seeing offensive linemen not knowing where to block. Who do I pick up? Where's my gap? And Bakersfield just bringing guys through, finding seams, finding a way to break that edge. And as soon as you get on the same level as the offensive linemen, those offensive linemen are in trouble. Moore has to know at that point of the game, throw the ball away, get rid of it, throw it near a receiver, but burn it. Don't take that huge loss because not only does it lose the yardage, but it takes them out of field goal range as well. That's right, way out. That was only a five-man rush, too. It wasn't like they brought the house. No, but that the different looks, the angles that they create with that multiple look on defense, with the movement, is what's throwing this Del Oro offensive line off. So now it's all the way backed up to the 48-yard line. A lot of that is what that vertical set that we're seeing a lot in college football is designed to take out of the game. You set vertically and you wait for things to come to you. That's one of the new fads in college football because it does pick up those games. It picks up the slants. It picks up all the different looks up front. It allows you to sort it out before it gets to you. So now 12 seconds remaining. Moore this time throws it about as far as he can, and a jump ball, and nobody got it. And there's still six seconds left. They're going for Travis Newman on the outside at 6'4", just trying to throw the jump ball up there and pick up some yards to try to get into field goal range so they can get some points going to the locker room. Here's another look at the last one. If anybody was going to get it, it was going to be their guy. Right there, ball hit his hands first, but just unable to lock it down. So likely the last play of the first half here. Moore straight back hit as he throws, and it's intercepted. And now look out, intercepted by Dallas. And Dallas still on his feet midfield, couldn't pick up the last block, and the half comes to an end. 
and a very impressive first half, really on both sides, but particularly on the side of the Bakersfield Drillers. They are tough. A very good offense, a very fast, aggressive defense. And this has just been a prize fight out here with these two punching it out. This is a fun football game to watch. Both these teams obviously deserve to be here. Yeah, absolutely. It's been uh, an offensive show so far. I think it's really going to be a halftime of adjustments. Who can make the right adjustments could win this game. It's not out of reach for Del Oro. Now that you see your opponent, and we've already seen some of those in-game adjustments by both coaches. They have changed some things to get some different looks. Del Oro with an opportunity slowed down. That option looked just a little bit by Bakersfield. And we're seeing good defensive rush by Bakersfield slowing down Del Oro. All right, right now let's go down to Kelly Tennant. She is with Coach Paul Gola. Coach, no question, Del Oro is making some noise right now. How do you contain them? You know, the big thing is we're, we're giving the backside A gap. we got to get that fixed and, and just settle down on defense. Offensively, you know, gave up that, that uh, turnover and then and stuff. That's only two times we've been stopped. We've got to keep going on offense and, and maybe even uh, run the clock a little bit to keep them off the field. You guys look pretty good, though. What do you like about what you've seen? I love the way Asani's managing the game, uh, passing and running, putting us in some great plays. Uh, like to clean up that, that turnover. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Good luck. Guys. All right. Thanks very much. Kelly, and uh, an outstanding first half. Fun football game here. Stars all over the place. At the half, it is Bakersfield 28, Del Oro 17. We'll be back. You're watching Time Warner Cable SoCal 101. Hi. These are Alex's devices. And these are Alex's devices powered by Time Warner Cable. Our app turns his Xbox 360, Roku, and laptop into TVs. It even turns his tablet and smartphone into remotes. And our internet makes it all instant. It's like magic. That shirt makes you look silly. We invent more ways to make your devices even better. Call 1-855-1TWC to get TV, internet, and phone starting at $79.99 a month. Upgrade and get a Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. It's not the Strip. It's not Las Vegas. It's not even Nevada. It's the Lobster Buffet at Valley View Casino and Hotel with hundreds of delicious choices, unlimited lobster nightly, endless desserts, and your first buffet's free when you join the Players Club. Plus, with your Players Club card, you'll enjoy generous rewards like free slot play, concerts, hotel suites, free dining, and more. It's classic Las Vegas style, and it's only at Valley View Casino and Hotel, San Diego's favorite. I love spinach. It can make me strong no matter what. I love the beets. I love to eat a princess. Kids, the better you know them, the more you love them. And nobody knows them better than Loma Linda University Children's Hospital. I love my mom and dad. We make it our life's mission to give kids what they need, to get them back to the things that they love most. I love to be healthy. To learn more about Loma Linda University Children's Hospital, join us on lomalindakids.org. Been in an accident? At Fix Auto Collision Centers, we take care of everything from repairing your car to working with your insurance company to get you back on the road faster. Every Fix Auto location is locally owned and operated. That means our total focus is on you and your car, which is why our customers trust us enough with their vehicle to recommend Fix Auto Collision Centers to friends and family. Visit FixAuto.com for a location near you. It's halftime at StubHub Center. Bakersfield leads Del Oro 28-17 in Division I state football. Earlier this evening, we showed you how Bakersfield Christian made the trek to the bowl championship games, but there's another team representing the central section. It's Bakersfield High, a program with a storied tradition in football that is trying to capture their first state championship in football since 1927. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Get ready to go, Bryson! Come! Come! Welcome to the home of not just one, but two of the Southern Regional Champions. While that is unprecedented, what is not is the football legacy that is alive and well in Bakersfield. Bakersfield High is home to the seven-time state champions, the most recent of those happening in 1927. Bakersfield Christian are the new kids on the block, making their first state appearance. And this modern collective of Bakersfield athletes are trying to add their names to the history books. It's a very special school, you know, they, they have a saying, a school's so good they named the city after it. So, but our kids know, you know, it's, it's the legacy. We play for those who came before us. We try to set a standard for those who follow. And 
And uh, we have a tremendous following, tremendous support in Bakersfield. And, and our kids, they, they understand. And, and there is a little bit of uh, pressure here, maybe more than other schools. It's really exciting because, you know, it shows what this, this community has, uh, has uh, brought up and produced. So maybe a lot of teams uh, around across the state don't uh, recognize Bakersfield, but maybe now they will. It's an amazing opportunity, seeing as how no one from the central section has done it in the modern era. You know, uh, a lot of talk going around school, and everyone's really excited. But you know, we, we try to come out and, uh, and and play it at a high level like we do every game, and you know, uh, keep calm and not let it, let it get into our play. The entire community has jumped on board with both schools' playoff runs, a huge source of pride for the entire city. You know, it's terrific, and it's terrific for our community because in the past, we've always had to watch everybody else go through and, and get all the recognition. And now we have teams of our own, and our community's terribly excited. And uh, both of these teams have had an outstanding season. So the folks have been able to uh, enjoy a, a good season of football, and now this is just the, the beginning for a championship. No central section team has played for a state title since the games were reinstated in 2006. And Bakersfield has the honor of sending two teams to the party. It's unbelievable the, the chance of this happening that you look at the state bowl system started in 2006 and no city, no one city has had two schools in the championships in the same year. And Bakersfield had not had a school in it at all. So now you have both of those coming together on the same night. It's just a special night for a, a, a town that really is football mad to begin with, and now it just kind of boils over. Well, we have some great football again tomorrow, starting at noon with Division Three, Division Two at 4 o'clock, Enterprise and Chaminade, and then the big one, Open Division, De La Salle and St. John Bosco at 8 p.m. here at SubHub. We are at halftime. Bakersfield leads 28-17 against Del Oro. We'll be back. You're watching Time Warner Cable SoCal 101. What are you? So you want to know what new music is coming out of the SoCal scene? Hi, I'm Julie Garcia, the host of SoCal Beat on Time Warner Cable, and I've got some of the best headphone candy around. Each week, I'll bring you trend-setting up-and-comers in the biz, along with some stellar songs to add to your playlist. You'll get the scoop on talented bands and artists before they hit it big. Get in tune with SoCal Beat. Now on Time Warner Cable Local On Demand. Dan Hut, you want outdoor and camping gear? Go to Major Surplus. Survival kits? Major Surplus. Military Surplus? Major Surplus. Tactical gear? Major Surplus. Southern California's largest surplus and survival store offers you a huge selection with new arrivals all the time. We're open seven days a week, and our friendly, knowledgeable staff will help you find exactly what you are looking for. So go to Major Surplus or Majorsurplus.com right now. Get down to the corner of Alondra and Figueroa. Huntington Beach Honda is Orange County's powerhouse dealer. We carry the full Honda lineup, including the all-new F6B Bagger, plus street bikes, off-road bikes, and scooters. All Honda, all the time. Huntington Beach Honda is fully stocked with parts and accessories you want. So if you want a Honda, we're the place to get it. My son and I got ours at Huntington Beach Honda. Huntington Beach Honda, your powerhouse dealer on Beach Boulevard, two miles south of the 405 freeway. The holiday seasons are here again, and wouldn't it be fun to go visit the family or take that road trip in a brand new car, like the fun sold the little hamster car? Or how about a Rio sedan? 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty, five star safety rating, gets over 30 miles a gallon. Think about this you can come down to Car Pros, drive either one home for 99 bucks a month. Everybody knows Car Pros sells for less. Car Pros Carson. Car Pros sells for less. C A R P R O S. Welcome back to the StubHub Center here in Carson, California. Second game of a weekend chock full of high school games where the Bakersfield Drillers leading the Del Oro Golden Eagles 28 to 17 to half. Barry Tompkins, that guy right there is Mike Pulaski and uh, been an outstanding football game. It did start to settle down a little bit in the second quarter. Everything was billed to be right off the top and the stars 
are definitely out tonight. The guys that we talked about to open this game are the guys that are playing football right now. Yeah, and how often does that happen? Not very often. Usually somebody we talk about gets a case of athlete's foot. Not so tonight. Rufus has been outstanding for Bakersfield. We talked about him in the open. We didn't give him enough credit. This guy is magical with the football in his hands. Running the option, great moves like the running back, can hurl it like a quarterback. And for Del Oro, their star is here as well. Dylan Kanerath has been fantastic. In behind that offensive line, finds a way to hit the seam, full speed, pad level down, just a tough runner. You know, the Wranglers, the boots, it's the whole image with this guy. You just see him put his head down and get the yards that he wants to get. A fantastic player. They are both playing at the top of their game. And you can see in the stats, Del Oro, 98 yards on the ground. Bakersfield has been fantastic with 173 rushing. One turnover apiece, almost even on plays. Del Oro with a little more ball control because Bakersfield is electric. But again, it's going to be the team that starts to falter on offense, and who's going to end up losing this game? Yeah, and don't you think it's one of those games that's going to come down to adjustments? Who's going to be able to stop the other guys? Because both these teams can score. That's been proven in the first half. We'll be back.